Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to jump in. We are, I believe we are live in Intuitive Daughters of God and also streaming into the Underestimated Warrior Show um, on YouTube. So hello to anyone who is joining us. We have quite a few. We are actually doing an interview series is what this has developed into. So we have an interview series going on that you're a part of. I don't know if you're aware of this. <laughs> I did see. I did see. <laughs> so, okay. So, hey, we've got some people popping on now. Hey, Lori, glad you could join us live today. Will you tag some people in here? That would be super awesome. Oh, and let me mark us as an announcement so we pop up here. So I have Janine on, and some of you may recognize Janine from a couple of months ago when I interviewed. I interviewed you right before your four-day reset. And we had some of the ladies that went into and, and did that four day reset. Ah, oh, that's oh, sweet. Love the lipstick, <laughs> Janine. I know. I love your red lipstick too. Always nice to uh, make you feel good. Yes. And I especially because if you have to wear a mask a lot. Oh, I know. Your lipstick sales have gone down because of the mask. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. And I can completely see that. So, um, are you, do, are you guys under a mask mandate? We are doing okay. We have to wear masks the whole time, but I know our scientists are really good. So they have now found a new strain <laughs> that has got more mutations. And I'm sure this thing is already all over the world, but just because our scientists are so diligent in their work <laughs> the media has now come out and i'm i mean i believe today the uk actually immediately closed off all the flights from and to south africa so <laughs> oh my gosh you're right it's probably already there wow that's that's right you guys have probably had a lot of um life changes that you've had to I think adapt we're a bit ahead. we're a bit like you guys are getting the delta thing we've had that uh, yeah that's come and gone already <laughs> actually i think we're i think it's pretty much gone, gone through us um hopefully so okay well i'm gonna go ahead and introduce our guest so like i said we've had janine on here before so janine Janine is from South Africa. That is the lovely accent that you're detecting. Janine has been in the health and fitness industry for over 18 years and has authority in releasing breakthrough and joy and victory. Yes. Having received a revelation on the original intent of health that the father has for each of his children and how intricately he planned each part of us before the foundations of the world, she shares her experience of going back to the garden and living in victory from a place of relationship as worship and celebration and the abundant life he has for us. Um, and I just realized this didn't all end up in here. So you are also a mom of a, is she six or seven now? She just recently turned seven. Just turned seven. Yay. I have a seven-year-old also. So <laughs> fun. It is a, it's a good age. So Janine, I, this is how, so this is funny because I reached out to Janine and I was like, Hey, um, I am going to be having a series of conversations on birthing your promise. And I have a feeling that you are somebody who can speak to this. And I have not even heard Janine's story yet. So we get to hear Janine's story that she's going to share with us. What was on my heart. And I'm so thankful, you know, in this, walk with God, where we actually connect through our intuition with him. Sometimes we just go based on a, just the sense, um, either that feeling or a knowing that, um, that something is right. And so when I reached out to Janine, I'm like, I just have the sense that you can speak into this. And by the way, um, what I want to talk about is what do you do or, or maybe a story you can share when there's a dream you've had and it's died or it's 
been so long in the back burner, so long in the back seat because something else has taken its place, you know, whether it was COVID related or, or, um, you know, some other circumstance or whether you just hit so many roadblocks, you took a step away from it. And then it ended up on the back burner and you're wondering, okay, well, if God is the God of resurrection, does he resurrect dreams? So that's why we entitled this resurrecting dreams. So yay. Thank you, Janine, for joining us and jumping in on this conversation. I would love, um, I would love it if you would just share with us and let us know, let us in on, on some of your story that relates to this conversation. Thanks for bringing me on. Yes. Um, I'm just going to be super real. <laughs> so I think that's so important though, is to be relatable and real. And um, I almost want to go back to the very beginning <laughs> because I think women can relate to this. When I was a little girl, my biggest dream was to one day get married and have children. Oh. It was my biggest dream. You know, you think, oh, I want to be a teacher or this or that. But I never really could tell you what I wanted to be, what job I wanted to do, yeah. what position I wanted to take to influence the world. My biggest dream was I want to be a wife and I want to be a mother. And that yeah. dream really extended into my adolescence, into my 20s. And then I did meet... When I was at university, I met my husband and we dated very long and got married. And my whole story is still quite fresh, <laughs> but oh. it ended up being a very abusive marriage, a very toxic marriage, a Ooh. very, very not a nice marriage. Yeah. <laughs> and I think why I want to start with that is because I put so much emphasis on that dream that I didn't even realize that there were other dreams for me. Oh. And when that dream didn't just die, it like mm. was ripped away, you know, because yeah. of the decisions that he had made, um, it really was, it was like unfair. It was unfair. Why am I, you know, this is one, not what I asked for. These yeah. are not decisions that I made. This is somebody else's decisions and they took these decisions and now my dreams must suffer. Yeah. And in the process of that, I don't wish everything that I went through, I don't wish it on anyone, but mm -hmm. I will not exchange that which I received from the Lord in that time. Mm -hmm. And this, the closeness of the Lord and the revelation of Father and the, just my encounters with Holy Spirit and just my personal growth through that. I'm somebody that really believes in, you know, that bring on the trials because there are joy in trials and you don't ever want to go through bad things, but there's nothing like that that brings out your character. <laughs> nothing like trials that brings out your character. Oh, that is so it's, true. Well, and so there's nothing like trials that builds nothing. intimacy with God, like that we get nothing. invited into that, like a, a sacred space that sometimes we don't even know existed before that. Yeah. So nothing like that. And I wanted to come back to that because in the process of me losing this dream that I thought was the biggest dream of my life, so many dreams were birthed. Mm. And I realized that there is so much more, that I had literally mm. done this <laughs> and just focused on one dream and just looked at this one thing and actually, in a way, idolized that. I started idolizing my marriage and that relationship and put it almost above the Lord. So in the process of me, really, that whole dream falling yeah. apart, <laughs> that whole dream falling apart and being ripped, ripped away, I discovered so many more dreams. And I discovered not only who the Lord made me, my identity and who he made me. I yeah, Like, I think if I think back of everything that I've been through, there were days when I physically did not know how I would like continue. So having had the experience wow. of, Physically, the Lord is my strength. Like I have physically felt the Lord is my strength. And I've just gone from strength to strength, from glory to glory. And that's the whole process. When you step out of that comfort zone, whether it be a positive or negative, and out of that yeah. one, there's one dream. This is it. Yeah. Because once you get married and then you've got a kid, like, okay, now what? You know, it's like you can't. So when that whole thing was ripped away, I really did discover 
so much more. And in the process now, in the aftermath mm. of everything, I can tell you that I have birthed several dreams. Yeah. <laughs> multiple dreams. I am busy birthing multiple dreams. Um, yeah. So there really has been a multiplication. And I do believe completely in restoration. There's been a multiplication. But I think I wanted to bring it back to that whole idea of so many women want to that is a big desire of our hearts to be yeah. married to have children that's a big desire of many women's hearts and i think if we're going to bring it back to birthing and drawing yeah. that analogy of birthing a dream you have to bring it back to the pre and the post because mm. to be pregnant with a dream there has to be a husband or you know, somebody that can make you pregnant yeah. and i think it comes back to the lord he will never force a dream on you no you will never if you don't agree to and come into agreement with yes lord i want this dream i want to birth this thing with yeah. you i want to co-create with you i want to walk this thing in partnership with you yeah. then he's not gonna do it on his own yeah. <laughs> he has to have your agreement in it yeah and i think it comes to that whole thing yes great you can have a baby you can birth a baby, but if the conditions before and the conditions after aren't right, you know, you have mm. to sort of look at the context. You've got to look at yeah. the situation that you're bringing the baby into. You know, everything has to be right for you to get pregnant so that you can birth a baby. Yeah. And then when the baby's born, it's not just instantly an adult. There's the <laughs> follows, you know, it's the easy part is almost the birth. The baby is not adult, it's so true. You birth the easy part is almost the birth, and everything after that is a little bit harder because now you've got this person. And I think if we want to draw it, that analogy with dreams, it's the same thing. Everything has to line up. You have to come into agreement. You have to say, Yes, I want this dream. I want to carry this dream and I want to birth this yeah. dream. And then from there, the conditions need to be right, the timing needs to be right, and it has to be. Not just, okay, oh, there's the baby now. You need to know what's going to happen next. Because now that if the baby has been birthed, then what? You know, so it yeah. really has to be the full context, the full before and after, and not just that process of carrying the baby and birthing it, which yeah. is a tiny part of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I just, in my experience, where one dream really died, and I do believe in restoration, that the Lord will restore that part, because I do believe in marriage. Um yeah. I think in the process, I discovered so much more about myself. I've helped other people birth some of their dreams. My, I, I got involved in multiple businesses. Some of these businesses actually help people to birth businesses and to birth wow. those dreams. Wow. So it's very interesting in the process of one dream really being destroyed. Um, there is restoration in that and it looks different than what we sometimes think. Yeah, sometimes we think, well, there's this this seed died, but God, it's amazing how God can bring a garden out of what we thought was just a dead seed. You know, like like um, Val chimed in here, multiples, yes, like a lot of us are birthing multiples, and that's really exciting. But it's also really important to understand the process of birthing and so i love janine how you have tied in you said you, like you've really got to look at the beginning and then you've got to look at the end you've got to look at the beginning of the process because if you miss the agreement you know when jesus anytime jesus did a creative miracle he always asked do you want to be healed isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And that agreement, and often because he, he also knows our hearts, he knows that sometimes there's a part of us that is afraid to dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of us that is, um, you know, some, I personally have had times that I have been so afraid of the unknown that even when I am not satisfied with the known and with the comfortable. I have had to really consider like, maybe I do actually just want to stay here and be stagnant and comfortable. <laughs> that's what I'm acting like. But, right no, now. that's a real thing. Listen, I think all of us can relate to that. 
because it is so much easier. The stretching, I mean, it is, you know, when having a baby is not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, I want to honor you for, for connecting this with your personal story, which is not unlike my own. Actually, we have a lot of parallels. Yeah. When I, yeah, when, when I, um, I, when I was living in Nashville, Tennessee, at this point, about 12 years ago, I had given up on some other dreams and decided to go all in on my family dream because that was the only thing I seemed to have, um, that my ex-husband and I could agree on. And then <laughs> apparently that was not our agreement either. And I did the same thing through his um his decisions i found myself in this place of um going through divorce and and there being betrayal and abandonment and the loss of the dream i had decided to go all in yep and, and it is so disappointing it hurts it sucks it's yeah. it's unfair it's you know all these things but we do believe in a god that can restore anything yeah. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy because yeah. I think in that process, he also wants us to draw close to him. And he wants oh, us. Sure. I was never disappointed in God because I yeah. knew it was a person that had made that decision, but yeah. it did get, it was an invitation. That whole journey was, has been an invitation for me to connect even deeper to the Lord. Yeah. So in that process, that was awesome because in, in that you just then open your heart to the Lord that you don't go into that place of, just disappointment and just yeah. hope deferred because we can so easily go and have that pity party and just yeah. give up. It's so easy to yeah. just go, even if it's not a healthy place, we mm. feel safe. We just want to, if you've been, I mean, if you also say like abu uh, abuse and betrayal and all these things, yeah. it's horrible. It's, uh, it's terrible. So you want to just withdraw and go live in the cave permanently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But, but I think part of that is the preparation and how, how you go about with, I, I always like, I equate it to the, the rise of the Phoenix. Um, yeah, that is how I feel, you know, from the ashes, this magnificent fiery bird will yeah. arise. Um, yeah. So it's really about, okay, Lord, what does this look like? Because obviously the picture that I had in my head was limiting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry if I limited you in the process. Yeah. What does this look like? And can I dream with you? Yeah. If if this is what my dreams, if this is what this looks like, then I don't want it. Yes. <laughs> I want your dreams. I want your dreams. Yeah. And what does that look like? So I think it's it just opens you up to more possibilities if you see it as mm -hmm. a catalyst, if you see it as an yeah. opportunity, if you see it as this is not the end. You're not dead. You're not bad things happened, but you are so much more real now. You're so much more relatable. You know what pain feels like. You know what other mm -hmm. people it's you it's just life becomes real and tangible for you. So then it is so much easier yeah. to know when times get tough. Oh, you know what? Look how the Lord, you can always fall back on look how the Lord didn't leave me. Look how the Lord always has my back when that was the worst time i can refer back that becomes a testimonial to yeah. okay that's now be gonna gonna become my floor anytime when it goes bad that's my floor and i'm just gonna keep building on top of it so that's that's a great way to grow if you just keep stepping in because he will never disappoint us he's never gonna leave us he's never gonna yeah. fail us he's never gonna disappoint us um yeah. just really leaning into what he has for us yeah, exactly, exactly. And sometimes sometimes we feel disappointed and we can blame God for that disappointment. But, I, you know, that's really where it comes down to is, is God truly good? And if mm -hmm. God is truly good, and if he's truly a good father, which we talked, uh, we actually, we had Dub on, we had Dub Alexander on two days ago, and we talked about um, how God is, is our good father. Mm. And Janine works with Deb. <laughs> Janine actually runs, I forgot to say this in the intro, Janine actually runs School of Kingdom South Africa. So um, she actually is, um, I guess, business partners. Are you business partners with Deb? Is that what you guys are? That's what you call it. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so we were talking, of course, about God being a good father. And there's a, there is a, um, 
there's a verse and I can't remember, I know it's in Psalm and somebody else will remember the reference to this. Um, and so put it in here if you know it, but it's the one that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So this to me is that picture of being drawn into a deeper place of intimacy with him in the midst of a dying dream. So in the midst of a dying dream, when you draw into that intimacy and remember nothing, no, no seed gets fertilized without intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. And so there is no baby if there is not this place of intimacy. And so when you take a dying dream to God in that place of intimacy and present it before him mm -hmm. and then have that posture of, I want to dream with you. Him, what he will do, and in, in my experience, is he will actually open up places in our hearts that we have allowed to be shut down, and he will bring to our mind the remembrance of who he made us to be and draw us into this space of dreaming with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that is how we are given the desires of our hearts mm -hmm. is in that mm -hmm. intimate space yes i think it even goes in that other verse in the bible that he will exceed our expectations beyond what you can think dream or imagine yeah. and his goodness is i mean i've tangibly physically felt his goodness i think it's when you know that god will never he will never force somebody to make a decision because that's i mean i he could have forced my husband to come right, you know, there we go, everything, but he will never, he will, he would never. So yeah. he knows that there is a plan of restoration. I mean, even in the beginning, in the original, the world was created, yeah. Jesus was slain before the foundations of the earth. There was always a plan. His goodness has prevailed from before we were even yeah. created. So it's really about us coming in agreement. And I think not just not just saying, yes, I agree, but I know that everything that you have for me is better than what I could even imagine, better than what I could even think for myself, what I can imagine. I mean, I can tell you what I want, Lord, but ultimately I know what you have for me is better. Yes. So right. it's awesome. I think, I think it opens you up to that anything is possible. That is, how, that is how I got to who I was. I found my identity in the Lord. I, I know who heaven calls me. I've, I've, mm. I'm like a superhero. You know, my bad experience turned me into a superhero. Yeah, <laughs> That's so how I, I see. So when I talk about that Phoenix rising, like that is how I see it in the spirit. It's like who who is always made me to be. I'm we're always in progress. We're always working towards it because, you know, it's it's an ongoing progress. But just coming into agreement with that instead of looking at, oh, my dream died and my dream died and my dream died and focusing on that, you like, yeah. oh, wow, Lord, this is actually what you had all along for me. This is who you made me even before all these bad things happened. Wow. You know, you almost can take hold of that then and that's yeah. going to carry you forward. So that gives you hope and that gives you just so much more to hold on to so that when you birth it, it's with joy, it's with yeah. victory, it's in partnership with the Lord. It's not from a place of hurt and pain and uh, payback. It's it's from just from that place of his goodness. Yes, absolutely. I love that. And so, so here we go, Echo. I think I know where it's coming from though. Okay. So I want to tie this to something really quickly. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant to do this because I want to, I want you ladies to hear my heart on this because I'm going to tell you uh, a quick little piece of my story. And I want you to hear the heart behind this. Um, so when I, before I had Emerald, my little girl, who is two and a half now, before I had Emerald, um, I was pregnant and had a miscarriage. And that, um, that pregnancy I carried around, um, 
I carried around some guilt initially because I had had kind of a sour attitude about being pregnant that time. <laughs> and I was just like, eh, you know, like I wasn't sure that I felt ready for it right then. I wasn't feeling good. All the things of when you're in your first trimester and I just kind of had a sour attitude and Jay and I were in a kind of a weird place where we were kind of plateaued in our relationship, like not great, but like not terrible, but we were bickering a lot. And I just, I don't know. I just had um, some negativity surrounding my reception of that pregnancy. And when I went through the miscarriage, here's what I want to make clear. God does not, God does not steal, kill and destroy the enemy does. Okay. And God, God did not, um, take my baby away because I had a bad attitude. Okay. So if you have had miscarriages or if you've had child loss, please hear my heart in this. That is not like God, God loves you. His heart broke with you. Like, um, but when I went through that process, God did a miraculous work in my marriage. God did a miraculous work in my heart. God gave me Emerald's name while I was going through the miscarrying process. So far before she was conceived mm -hmm. and he began to plant this dream in me that, that she was coming mm -hmm. even as I was going through this loss. And so, and so I feel like, um, the gift, what I can see, um, was layers of gifts that were given to me. But one of them was by the time Emerald came along, like by the time I was actually giving birth to her, mm -hmm. I wanted her more than anything. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, um, that's a good, that shows us what it's like when we've had the death of a dream. And then we can, we dream with God and we connect with the dream he plants in our heart. And we see that process through with him. Mm -hmm. That when we come out and that baby is born, that there that is that is such a treasure that you get to share in this, like I God and I co-created this together. And there's this immeasurable joy that comes from that place, which is different than the times that I have tried to birth my own dream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that, Nanette. Thanks for sharing that. I think mm -hmm. any loss, I mean, I, when my mother passed away very, very suddenly about yeah. just over 10 years ago, I, I, my prayer was, Lord, don't let this be a catalyst because I know that with you, nothing is wasted. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever yeah. wasted. So yeah. let this be a catalyst that I come into agreement with mm -hmm. the, your goodness, with the things that you have for me, that, yeah. that it's not just a loss and a heavy thing to carry, but yeah. that it births something yeah. good, that there's good that comes from this, even though it's hard to bear right now, that it will birth something good. Yes, exactly. Exactly. God always, he, he, he builds on everything. He births through, every, like he, he is not deterred mm -hmm. by what we see as hope deferred. I think uh, Val just said something about that. Hope mm -hmm. deferred, it sometimes feels the impossible to really fully believe the good is coming. When you've gone through a lot of loss or a lot of disappointment, that can be very accurate. And actually, that's one of the things that the enemy is trying to do with intuitive daughters of God specifically is to keep us contained. And one of the ways to do that is to keep us from dreaming, because when we're dreaming with God, then we are uncontainable. When we're dreaming with God, then literally anything is possible and we are such a force. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yes, I love how you said that nothing is ever wasted. Thank you. No, thanks. I love that. I love that dreaming with him because I think if we do it on our own, it's limited and it's 
not as big and fruitful as it can be because on our own it's never going to be as good with him oh no it's, it's we're unlimited we're endless yeah. we're it's not we're not we're not the source we don't do it out of our own power so yeah. that's just so exciting yeah. to know it's we tap into him and his immaculate yeah. unmeasurable endlessness isn't that i mean that's just so exciting i think it's for me so that's just exciting. Like, Okay, Lord, I'm just I'm just holding on. I'm just holding on. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, I want the breakthrough now. I don't want to be stuck with all these not nice things, but I'm holding on yeah. to you. I'm trusting you. It's really, it is really like that thing of Peter having to step out the boat and get on the water, you know. Lord, I do trust you. So I am gonna just keep trusting you and just keep going. And he will yeah. always, he will always meet us. He yes. will always meet us. He won't just drop us. So Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's one thing that he has had to teach me, had to confirm with me. Oh, we've got an echo again. All right, well, that's okay because we are reaching the <laughs> We are reaching the end of this wonderful conversation. Um, right now, Janine is in the process of rebranding. And so what I'm going to share with you of hers is actually her email address. She would love to connect with you at 40 strong at unlimited life dot co.za. And I will also post that in um, in the description and notes after we are off of here. I want to remind all of you that co-create the workshop is coming up December 6th through 9th. So this conversation leads directly into what we're going to be diving into and in co-create the workshop where you are going to come up with an actual birth plan for your promise for that dream that God has placed in your heart. Well, the dream that you're co-creating with God. And I do not have reg registration for that should be up on Tuesday. In the meantime, go to intuitivedaughtersofgod.com forward slash gift. And there is a free training there for you. Plus you'll get waitlisted and know first when that, um, when that registration opens up for the workshop, which is something I'm super excited about. All right. Well, thank you again, Janine. You're absolutely delightful. I love having these conversations with you. Oh, thanks so much for inviting me and for listening. Thanks for listening, yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody who is here now and everybody who's going to watch in the replay. Bless you all and have an amazing weekend. Bye. Bye.